Hello and welcome to another AIC video. Today it's going to be a little bit different of a video than I normally do. I'm not going to be reviewing a specific product. Uh, for anybody who's kind of the IT person in their family, you're well aware of if anybody has any IT questions or needs, you're the first person they come to and that is absolutely no exception for me. And in this case, my own mother has come to me and asked me to help her to replace her current laptop. About four years ago, I gave her one of my old laptops, an X250, and she has worn it out. Normally those, those laptops can take a beating, but my mother is a very heavy user of her systems. And uh, I, I would put her under a power user category, except for she doesn't necessarily need a lot of horsepower in her system. She just needs something that can take a beating. And so we're gonna go through a bunch of laptops I have here. Uh, for her, so this video is really for my mom. If you're not my mom, you're welcome to stay and watch, uh, but I, maybe you'll learn something from this, but it's not meant for you, but it should be interesting uh, to say the least. So in front of me, we have a few different laptops. I have a couple of Dells. I have several Lenovo's um, and I have an Asus. This I just have here for demonstration. This is my current daily driver. It's a Legion 7. Uh, this is a beast. This uh, goes toe to toe with my desktop PC in far, as far as performance, both in CPU and graphics. Um, this is not the kind of system my mom is looking for. It is heavy. It has RGB lights that uh, will light up the entire room in a rainbow. Um, and it is significantly powerful. Uh, she's more into these systems. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I review them. Small, light, but with enough juice to get her doing what she needs to do. So I'm gonna readjust the camera and we're gonna take a much closer look at these, uh, look at their ports, look at their overall design and layout, and then we'll look at some performance as well. All right, we will start off with our 11.6 inch screen laptops. Start off with one of my favorites. It's the Lenovo IdeaPad 1, it has an AMD processor. I believe it's four core, uh, eight, uh, excuse me, four core, four thread processor. Um, has four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. That is not upgradable, but it is a very nice sized small laptop. And of course, we're going to go through and do performance benchmarks of these. Has a pretty good touchpad, pretty nice keyboard. The next one is oh, ports, ports. That's a probably important thing. So we have power, we have two USB. Type A's, we have HDMI, we have micro SD card. On this side, we just have a headphone microphone jack. So this does not have USB type C. So if that's important for you, do not pick that one. All right, so this is a little bit older of a Dell. It is a Dell Latitude. So normally I hate Dells. I really don't like them. My work laptop's a Dell. It is an Inspiron brand. The only Dell I would buy is a Latitude. That is their business class laptop marketed to companies and they are definitely built differently than their normal consumer grade systems. They're just more robust, better keyboards, better screens, better cooling. They're not as slick and slim as other ones, but if you're going to buy a Dell, buy the Latitude, period. I can't recommend any of the other ones, but this one is a little bit different. First, we'll do the port so I don't forget again. HDMI, two USB, and this side, we just have our headphone microphone, our power and a volume rocker. The reason why these are on the side here is because this system is a touchscreen and is a 360. Now, obviously I need to clean all of these, but it is now in tablet mode. And so that is a nice feature if you are somebody who likes touchscreens. I am not a touchscreen person myself, but it is nice for that. I got that for my kids for school. Uh, school has since supplied them with laptops, so that one has been sitting collecting dust. And then it, I have my Asus, my L210M. This has the Intel Celeron N4020. That's a two core, two thread processor. This has one of my favorite features where you can turn this into a numpad. You can't feel that, it just feels normal, you know, smooth all the way across, but one of my absolute favorite features of a system. And these are all really nice and light and thin. 
Next we have kind of an older school education laptop. So this Dell that I showed first um, here is an education laptop. It has a big rubber bumper around the edges. That's been dropped a couple times. I had to re-glue this corner back together a little bit because my daughter had dropped it, uh, but still in fine working order. This is a Lenovo that was an education version. And so it's a bit chonkier. We have VGA, we have two SD card slots. We have ethernet. This is our first laptop that has a full-size ethernet port. Headphone microphone, uh, full-size SD card, an HDMI port, a always on USB port, and then the power. Now this is older, it's a third gen core i3. Has the ThinkPad keyboard, which is always a really nice keyboard. It has your track point. Um, the screen's just okay. Again, it's 11.6 inch, but it's not high res. It's not glossy. It's, it's, it's adequate for its needs. Um, this isn't the fastest or the most powerful. It is slightly faster. We'll go over full total benchmarks here in a bit. Uh, but um, it's just older. It does the job. Um, it works hard at what it does. There's another one I bought for my kids to do schoolwork from home when they during COVID last year. And again, school supplied them with laptops since, so they don't need it. We'll go up to a little bit bigger in size. This is a ThinkPad X220. This is exactly what my mom already has, minus the orange decal. Ports, VGA, USB, uh, Type-A, um, display port charging port another usb full-size sd card and an ethernet port so another ethernet port here and a couple nice things about this as a backlit keyboard has a fingerprint set a uh, fingerprint sensor and while it's the same screen resolution as the others it uh, is a little bit bigger screen a little bit bigger system overall and we'll go over performance again like i said in a little bit then we have a T450, which is the same CPU, memory, and storage as the X250. Uh, this is just a bigger screen. So it's a 14 inch screen. We'll go around again with ports. It's a little bit harder with a little bit bigger laptop. Uh, two USB on this side, the um, display port charging, and on this side, so we get another USB, full-size SD, Ethernet, display port, and it's not display port, sorry, VGA, and your headphone microphone. And last but decidedly not least is another Dell. And again, like I said, I normally really don't like Dells, but this is another business class laptop. It's Latitude 7490. So this has an eighth gen Core i5 processor. And being that means we finally have our USB type C, uh, HDMI, two USB ports. This is a smart card reader, which is, we don't use in civilian life. Your charging port, but it also does charge off of the USB type C. On this side, we have another USB, your uh, ethernet and a micro SD card slot reader. So, oh, did I go on the ports on the ASUS? I don't think I went over the ports on the ASUS. I apologize. I'll go back to that real quick. All right. On here, we have uh, micro SD. It has a USB Type-C, but you cannot charge it off that. HDMI, USB Type-A. On this side, headphone, microphone, and another USB Type-A. All right, so now what we're going to do as I'm going to set them all back up again, and we're going to look at the different performance numbers of these systems. All right, so I have the laptop set up here with their performance ratings on display. I also have a quick YouTube video that's not going to hit me with a copyright claim to show you. But I just want to show you kind of from lowest score to highest score. The lowest score on this is the ASUS, unfortunately with that Intel Celeron processor. It just isn't very fast. It's still very usable, but it's not very quick. Uh, one of its biggest problems is just the overall 
performance of the system, CPU, uh, compute, as well as graphics. Uh, and then the storage is not very quick with that EMMC flash storage, uh, kind of kills its overall performance. You can see how big of a difference that makes when we go to our next machine. If we go here to the Intel, or excuse me, to the Dell 11 inch, um, it has a much older and slower uh, SATA drive, but we're still pushing out nearly three and a half times the performance. So much faster storage performance means faster overall system performance. Now, in real world difference, you're not gonna notice a huge difference on these machines since they both are rocking just four gigs of RAM. And that really is one of the limitations on these systems. If we go to the next lowest score, this is the Core i3. And you'll see that there's not much difference between a newer gen Celeron than an older gen Core i3 processor. Uh, in fact, the CPU is slower and it's some of these other scores with the memory and the graphics that are a little bit better on the i3 processor. Uh, so definitely a little bit of a jump up, but not much. Now, when we go to the AMD processor, a huge jump up in performance in this generation versus the Celeron. So the Celeron is the most inexpensive processor you can buy. And so jumping up to the AMD, big boost in both the compute as well as graphics, huge jump in the graphics mainly. You can see the storage because this is still using the EMMC flash storage, still really low. Unfortunately, it's not upgradable on this system. It is upgradable on the ASUS, but not on this Lenovo IdeaPad, this one here. Next one in this line, again, is the X250 that my mother already uses. This one is a little bit nicer with a couple of more features, but um, its performance is just not as good as the AMD. So it's actually surprising. The newer base model CPU is faster than one that's probably about six, seven years old now, um, a Core i5 um, with more memory. Uh, now this does outperform it in uh, 3D graphics as well as the storage. Again, it is re running a SATA drive on here versus the EMMC storage, but it is not much faster. And then we have the very similar T450. Uh, I really feel this performance between the two, uh, the X250 and the T250, probably was just a background application running. They're the same CPU, same amount of RAM, uh, same storage. They should have basically the same performance. Could be that the T420 is just able to keep it a little bit cooler, so it can run a little bit uh, higher clocks. Can't say for sure, uh, but I'm sure if I were to run these again right now, the scores would probably be, um, they go back and forth between the two. And then the last one is the Dell, the 14 inch Dell. And its score is significantly better across the board disc. CPU, GPU is all better because it has that eighth gen core i5 processor uh, in competition with AMD going from 7th gen to 8th gen, really 6th gen to 8th gen because there weren't a lot released with the 7th gen. Um, they really stepped up in performance. They went from a typical two core, four thread to a four core, eight thread CPU. So significantly faster across the board on that. So now, all right. So for this part of the video, what I've done is my camera is obviously going to adjust the brightness of each screen as I go between them. It's also going to compress the audio you're going to hear. So I'm really hoping that a comparison of the laptops, I've set them all to 50% volume. I have all the same video uh, from the same upload loaded to the same minute mark within the video. I'm gonna play a few seconds on each system. Uh, but as I go through these real quick, one thing I wanna show out uh, is every single laptop has Despite its physical size, the same resolution, except this Dell back here. So all these are uh, 1366 by 768. So the 11 and a half inch, or the 11.6, the 12 and a half inch, and this 14 inch back here all have the same resolution of screen. And that matters in that, especially on these bigger screens, 
you get less room on the screen than you would on this one, which has a 1920 by 1080 screen. You just get a lot more on the screen to see, even though the, the, it's been adjusted for the video, you can see the menu here on the side. You just get so much more on the screen real estate wise. So um, that's one thing I wanted to point out before I start going through each one of these and you kind of see the difference between them. So we're going to start off with the little Asus first. I'm just going to transition between full screen and not full screen. Oh, and of course there's an ad. I'm going to skip out of full screen. All right, pause that there. So we play about 17 seconds worth. All right, now we're on the little Dell that is the 360. This is the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad uh, education version uh, X131E with the Core i3. And again, I'm only playing this because I know a lot of other YouTubers use it. Uh, and I won't get a copyright strike for using this, uh, this audio. Um, a lot of stuff I've used in the past that's uh, supposed to be royalty free, I've still gotten dinged. And again, all these are at 50% volume of the system. to this Lenovo here. Go to its brother back here. All right, and the last one, the Big Dell. So, as far as sound goes, the sound speaker quality, I would say it's definitely a pretty good toss-up between the 14-inch Dell and the think uh, IdeaPad with the AMD processor. Uh, pretty good sound between both of them. Oh, I'm going to add a dying battery back here. I'll get you plugged in in just a second, buddy. Um, it uh, Pretty good sound between the two of them. I think the Dell has it with my ear, uh, but it also has a much better screen. As far as the rest of them, I would definitely say that this Dell has a better screen than this Lenovo, which is the IdeaPad with the AMD processor, then the X220, um, and then this Dell, uh, which is the 360 model uh, with the touchscreen, and then the little Asus um, is last. Um, I really don't like the 131E 
or the 14 inch um, uh, T450 for its screen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here. I'm going to record a video on each of their webcams. So that's going to be fun. All right, this is a recording on the 360 Dell on its webcam with its microphone. All right, this is recording on the L210 with its camera and microphone. Uh, just from my view immediately, this is the second one I'm doing and it is definitely worse than the uh, 360 Dell. All right, so this is recording on the X131E. Uh, it also has a pretty terrible uh, camera. Obviously, I'll have to wait to hear what its microphone sounds like. All right, this is the X250, and it's pretty reasonable. I have really good light in here. I know I keep looking down at the screen and not at the camera, so it looks like my eyes are half closed. Um, but I have pretty good light in here, and it's picking me up pretty well. Uh, we'll see how the microphone goes, but I think it should do okay. I'm used to hearing this one on uh, video chats with my mom, who uses this computer. All right, this looks to be very similar to the X250, as it is a uh, T450, and so should have pretty much exactly the same hardware in it. All right, so this is on the Lenovo IdeaPad 1 with the AMD processor, and its camera is also not good. <laughs> This is actually pretty bad. It was worse than I was expecting. All right, this is recording on the 14-inch Dell. Uh, it's okay. Uh, better than most of the other ones. Not great, but not terrible either. We'll see how the microphone does. All right, conclusion time. So, I have these running a little benchmark here just for visual aid, but... My mom always jokes that a few years ago, I encouraged her to buy her first semi-luxury car. It was a Saab 9.3, and it was a higher trim, a linear or something like that. And it had some nice features to it that my mom had never had in a vehicle before, or my dad. Um, and so my mom says that I've always ruined her with that car. And now when they go to buy new cars that they definitely have some expectations they wouldn't have normally had on previous cars and one of those that my mom has for laptops specifically is a backlit keyboard and really the only two systems i have that have that feature are the x250 and the 14 inch dell uh, that's one of those things that i think that she's definitely going to want to have so i know i threw a lot of computers out here uh, to show my mom what she's looking at uh, as far as laptops that she'd get from me. Uh, but I mostly wanted to show just an, a wide range of options and screens of systems that I've done reviews on in the past, some that I haven't, to give you an opportunity to kind of see what's out there. There's so many computers on the used market and on the new market that aren't always hitting every mark. And I know these systems that are budget systems are excellent if you have the right expectations. A lot of times I'll get comments about people from people who bought these and then are unhappy with their purchase. That always makes me feel a little bit bad. I do my best to try to demonstrate their actual capabilities and they're not high. They're not high. They are basic level systems. It used to be that I could buy them for about $150. In fact, I think I spent under $200 for this system. Unfortunately, with the way things are going right now with inflation and distribution problems and all that other jazz, uh, they're now sub 300 laptops instead of sub 200 dollar laptops. So the price has gone up quite a bit. And so that really pushes us into a used computer as far as something more affordable, but still fairly powerful. And so if I were to recommend one to my mom, it would be this Dell. The reason being is it has modern day ports with that USB type C that's a display, display port over type C uh, that you can charge the laptop off of it. You can charge off the standard charging port. It has other USB type A's. It has a full ethernet port. It has that backlit keyboard. It has a full uh, 1080 screen. That's to me anymore. These uh, 1366 by 768 screens, uh, unless you're on these really small screens, I don't feel like it's enough resolution with today's uh, computers and the internet, things like that. You just want more pixels. Your, sh your phone has a much higher pixel density. Uh, heck, even screens in cars have a higher pixel density than some of these systems. 
with their larger screens, but lower resolutions. So it just, it makes it look a little dated and it makes it harder to use productivity tools uh, when using the system. So that is my conclusion. This is the one I recommend of these laptops specifically for my mom. Now your use case, if you're not my mom and you're watching this video, may be vastly different. And I've said in the past, some of these systems like this Lenovo are amazing computers. They get six, eight, 10 hours of battery life depending on your use. I've gone whole uh, vacations with my family being able to use this to watch videos, you know, cook it up to a, a, a TV, uh, watch videos, um, surf the internet, check my email, remote into things for work, and never plug it in and charge it. Uh, if you need a touch screen, there's really not a whole lot you can do uh, without it. My kids are in school, they all have laptops from their schools, they all have touch screens, and their school classes their assignments that they do on the computer are designed around a touchscreen. That's why I quit having them use computers like this because it just wasn't cutting it. So again, you need to examine your own use case, but I hope that this helps you kind of see some of those options. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.